Greetings, friendly friends. <laughs> um, welcome to this uh, prophetic tarot. Uh, welcome if this is your first time with me and welcome back to my regulars. <laughs> um, I am once again switching up the structure of my readings. So if this is your first reading, definitely stick with me here for a second. I'm just going to explain how this reading is going to work. And for anyone who's seen a lot of my readings before, just know this one's different. So you might want to uh, stick around for this just really quick explanation. So what I'm going to do is uh, I've been doing heavenly and underworld readings. And then I was doing fairy demon readings and then I merged them. <laughs> and so I'm kind of playing in this world of like heavenly realms and the underworld. Noticing their similarities and their differences and what they have um, for us all. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start doing... I'm going to merge them, but keep them separate, basically. So the prophetic readings that I release in the mornings will have basically a prophetic word or a vision for what is possible for us on whatever day it is you find that reading. And then that corresponding reading in the evening will address the blind spots that potentially might be in the way of that. So they're going to correspond, meaning the one will be about the other and the other will be about the one. And so we're going to start with the prophetic ones in the morning. I am going to use my uh, Passion Translation Bible here for this, which I think is really fun. So I'm just going to kind of go like this and like randomly kind of just like be drawn. So I guess here we are. That's so funny because this is what I was reading um, just the other day, the book of Colossians. So um, I've been drawn, been drawn to this book recently and so i'm going to use this for the prophetic words in the morning and just sort of be randomly be drawn to a passage and then we'll unpack it using a couple tarot decks or one or a zillion or all of them <laughs> who knows um so we'll just dig into it into what that word can mean for us for the day and then um, in the evenings like i said the blind spots will be correlated and we'll address the topic corresponding and correlating with that prophetic word and if you're unfamiliar with the term prophetic word or you're just not really sure how it works basically we exist in a realm of multiple possibilities at any one point in time <clears throat> excuse me and so what the prophetic ministry does is it basically the, or i should say the goal of it is to access essentially the greatest fulfillment path in any given moment so it will the information coming through will access, quote unquote, your most prosperous and abundant timeline. And it will tell you what that's going, what that could be like. Now, it doesn't guarantee it and it doesn't um, determine it. It calls out the possibility, which rearranges your cellular structure in accordance with that possibility. And so there's a lot on both ends of uh, the creation of it from the word and then the partnering of it to become the person who's a frequency match to it. But all it's doing is it's opening up possibilities. Or if you're familiar with the term portals, it's just opening up a portal or it's showing you what's possible. It's sort of like, um, it's sort of like, you know, how like a lot of coaches and um, readers will talk about what other people experience through their work. Those are all portals. It's showing you what's possible through their work. It's why it's such a powerful tool. Um, and so, the prophetic is similar in that it's just speaking the words using it's it's, <laughs> it's giving form to the possibility by structuring it through words and allowing the words to become the portal through which it can become your embodied reality that embodied reality is your responsibility to um, receive surrender to allow um, clear up everything in the way of it which is why the blind spots will help us there and which is what I think um, one of the biggest missing pieces I think is in the prophetic is not addressing everything that comes up in the way <laughs> of the potential they see in their world. And then similarly in tarot readings, I feel that a lot of what we can do is just nuance problems and forget the reason why we're doing it in the first place, <laughs> which is for the prophetic vision that we have for our lives, right? So it's my vision to merge the two and I hope that it benefits you guys to do so. So, okay. So I'm just going to read like a couple verses, however many I feel led to here from like the random spot that we just kind of came to together and we'll, we'll get a word for it. So since we first heard about you, we've kept you always in our prayers that you would receive the perfect knowledge of God's pleasure over your lives. 
making you reservoirs of every kind of wisdom and spiritual understanding. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this is a recipe to start with. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. I'm gonna read this again. Since we first heard about you, we've kept you always in our prayers that you would receive the perfect knowledge of God's pleasure over your lives, making you reservoirs of every kind of wisdom and spiritual understanding. Okay. I'm not going to get preachy here, but I am just going to say this is interesting because it's saying that predicated on wisdom and spiritual understanding is God's pleasure over our lives. Whatever divinity you believe in, if you don't believe that it delights in you and rejoices over you and wants you, chooses you, enjoys you, you're actually um, far removed, right, from the spiritual wisdom or from spiritual understanding and wisdom itself. All right, so... What I'm seeing is like, this word is actually just about like, oh, a revelation as we would call it in the charismatic world, <laughs> a revelation of God's love for you. So even if you don't vibe with the, with the word God, if it's a God source universe, your soul, your higher self, etc., a lot of people like, um, approach those representatives of their own divinity very sheepishly a lot of people approach them thinking that they need to earn the insight and that they need to work for it and a lot of people approach it thinking that they them them and their humanity is the bother and that the the being stationed in the divine state is there to help fix them and the way that we see the divine in this sense, it just shows us the way that we ultimately really feel about ourselves. So let's say I'm always approaching the divine, however I see it, saying that I'm sorry, saying I'm sorry, saying I'm sorry. That could be that because maybe I ultimately see myself as a bother, right? Maybe I always approach the divine with a request, I always want something. I always want, um, want, need, expect, like some sort of like miraculous, like, oh, can I have 20 bucks? Can I have a hundred bucks? Can I have this? Can I have that? Really what that is, is it's because I don't trust in myself to consistently provide for myself. I don't believe in my ability to create my own wealth, right? If that's my, if that's what I'm going to the divine for. Let's say I'm always going to the, to the divine for forgiveness. It could be because I see myself as ultimately bad and that I need that to be forgiven in order for me to live a life I enjoy. So these are just some examples and some ways that you can see to hopefully uncover a little bit the way that the way that we see divinity works in our lives because essentially what it is is It's possible that what you project onto God is actually how you see your potential. So if you see your potential as riddled by your own badness, you're always going to be asking for forgiveness. If you see your potential as um, impossible because you don't believe in your ability to create wealth, right? You're always going to be asking that thing for that sort of request. This isn't a bad thing. And in fact, it's actually very wise of us to station those things separate from us. But what I think this invitation is here is however you perceive the divine to be toward you. Let me say it this way. How, however much joy you think the divine has, I want you to like a hundred exit. <laughs> Forget 10 X. <laughs> okay. hundred X. However much fun you think the divine has leading, guiding, watching you evolve and want you to 100x that joy like what if the things that you think make you a bother actually make you like so delightful 
What if the things that you're super guilty and shameful about are actually completely forgiven? What if everything you keep asking for is completely in your power to self-source? And what I see is doing is I see is all coming into this upgrade and the way that we see the divine. So let's say you see it as your higher self, right? What comes up when you have conversations with it? Is there an ounce, even an ounce of feeling like a bother? Is there even an ounce of feeling like, no, I already asked for something earlier. I don't want to ask again, you know, or is there an ounce of learned helplessness where you actually already know? <laughs> what to do or how to do it, right? And you just keep asking in this sort of infantile kind of way. Even if you did, it doesn't make you a bother or a burden. It's just creating an opportunity for you to increase in the knowledge of God's pleasure over you. <laughs> like you get to do that. You get to totally be like just a big baby and the divine's gonna be like, okay. <laughs> All right, cute little baby, what do you need now? All right? You get to not believe in your ability to create wealth for as long as you want to. This isn't about fixing. This is about recognizing that you could get it every single, you could get it wrong every day for the rest of your life. And whatever you perceive the divine to be would be no less pleased with you because you are the object of its affection. Like, what if that gets to be true? What if no matter what, there's something for you, not against you? What if the divine is in a good mood and pleased to see you every day? Every day you wake up, what if the divine just rejoices that they get to dance another dance with you? So I see us all just sort of have these like, it's like, it's funny. It's like, I'm having a vision of us having visions, but it's like, I just sort of see us all playing with our ideas of the divine in a new way. Like whatever your vision of the divine is, if you call it God, source, universe, consciousness, the all, the collective, if you believe in fairies and spirit guides and angels and ancestors, whatever they are, I see us playing with this idea that however happy they are to see me, it's more. However glad they are that I've come to them with a request, they're even more glad. Even when I do it <laughs> from helplessness, <laughs> learned helplessness, right? Even when I do it, goofy, they're always just happy to see me, always. And this actually, this is really fun because this is, um, in the charismatic world that I've like uh, been trained in the prophetic in, um, the pastor used to start every single sermon for I don't know how long, I would guess like a decade or something. And he still says it sometimes. He says he'll just get up on stage and grab the microphone and stand there and he'll just say, God's in a good mood. <laughs> God is in a good mood. That's it. And I always thought about. I, I was like, well, what would I say? Like, what would I say about God that I would want people to know about God because of my embodiment and like what I'm teaching? And I, I just decided, I was like, you know, I want to say God's in a good mood and God's really, really glad to see you. Really, really, really glad to see you. Even on your worst day when you got the same thing wrong that you keep getting wrong. <laughs> Even when you did it again. <laughs> Look.
whatever it is, you did it again. That thing, the thing that you did, you did it. And you did it again and again. <laughs> Even on that day, when you wake up after having done the thing that you did again and again and again, that day, God's still in a good mood and still really glad to see you. And I wonder what that would be like in our being, right? And who we are if we believed that to be true about the divine and what would it be like if we could begin to dream about embodying that joy? What would that be like for us, right? So, okay, by the way, that was Colossians 1, 9 for anyone who cares. This is the Passion Translation, which is super different. Um, <laughs> shout out to Miriam who gave me this Bible. Um, I love it. And I'm so glad that I have it right now in this season of life. It was the perfectly timed and lovely, lovely gift. I'll send her a screenshot of this reading so she knows that I'm using it in a reading. She'll be <laughs> probably really tickled by that because she's a worship leader. <laughs> I don't know where Christians are with regards to tarot these days. I don't know, you know. But um, anyways, thank you for this gift, my my dear friend. Um, and thank you all for joining me for this reading. This was really, really fun to do. Um, I loved just kind of massaging out how to merge all the different worlds that I've been in and I'm going to keep doing it um, probably for the rest of my life. And it's just really, really fun for me to express myself, not just spiritually, but artistically in this way. And um, for you all to be here with me, it's like such a joy. So thank you for joining me. I hope that this word was really um, beneficial to your journey and brings joy and peace and makes you feel worthy of grace that you get to receive exceedingly and abundantly beyond what you could ask for or imagine. So um, thank you guys for joining me. If you would like to uncover with me what any blind spots might be getting in the way of this becoming true for our lives, I'm literally just going to scooch this Bible over to the side. I'm going to grab my blind spot deck and we're going to dig into that. So it's going to be a little bit more gnarly. It might uncover some stuff that are, that's kind of hard to hear but it really helps benefit us to see what's in the way. It's sort of like if you're going to plant a garden, but there's a bunch of weeds there, it would be really foolish to just throw seeds on top of them. You've got to do the work of uncovering <laughs> the weeds and digging them out and creating uh, you know, healthy, clear, fertile soil for uh, something new. So if there's anything in the way of this producing a good and abundant harvest, then we are going to find it and we will uh, lovingly address it and um, gain the wisdom from why that's been there and appreciate it for holding the place for us <laughs> all along the way. So um, thanks for joining me. I hope to see you in another video. I am also in the middle of my completely free uh, 12 week uh, mental reset, uh, my online course called Think With Your Whole Body. And so if you find that you're someone who overthinks a lot and has a lot of mental chatter, has a hard time finding clarity of mind, um, or just keeps hitting these same issues over and over and over and can't really understand why, I am basically teaching um, energy work through the chakras and I'm going to help you uncover which part of your energy body that um, these issues could be in. I'm going to do a reading for every chakra and a teaching for every chakra and there's a really beefy introduction. The introduction itself is like three videos long um, and so I'm teaching everything, all the best information that I have access to and a little bit even beyond um, about chakra work and embodiment. I'm making some corrections to pop spirituality and um, correcting some mistakes that I think confuse people a little bit so even if you are a chakra teacher or energy worker yourself you will absolutely gain a lot from this it will help you serve your um, clients and customers uh, a million times better so um, I would love to join you in there uh, the link to that is in the description box below we are already in at the time of filming this in the second week but I'm keeping enrollment open uh, and so you can pop in anytime and join us for the free live coaching calls every Sunday. So if you'd like to join me there, the link is in the description box below. If you would like to book a private 
personal reading, you can also do that in the description box below. I do them all remote so it doesn't take any time away from you. I just hit record on the mp3 on my phone and I record the audio of a reading and I send it to you so that you have lifetime access to it and it will continue to serve you. I have people tell me that my readings still keep unraveling years after I've sent them and they go back to them over and over and um, I've just been getting really outrageously positive feedback on those. So um, if you're into readings, especially if it's your first one, I would really love to um, <laughs> initiate you into that world. Um, and so the link to do that is in the description box below for a tarot reading as well as an astrology chart reading. So, uh, and if you would like to connect with me on any social media platforms, all of the links to do that are also in the description box below. I'd love to see you on Instagram, TikTok, um, or here for another video. So be sure to subscribe to my channel to get notifications anytime I post a new video. Um, and hit the little bell icon if you would like, although I may recommend actually not doing that because I post a lot of videos. There might be too many notifications, so maybe just subscribe. <laughs> but feel free to give this video a like if it was helpful and leave me a little comment to let me know how it was. I would love to connect with you. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a really, really magical day whenever and wherever you see this. And I believe in exceedingly abundantly better than you could ever ask for or imagine for your life. And I hope that this reading gets you there. Thanks. Bye.